The Sylph Tower, obviously not gonna be as long as in my red LP. Gosh, that was disastrous. It took like 10% of the entire LP. But uh, anyway, the elevator doesn't even work. And, uh, oh, he's gonna give me something at least. The upgrade, so good thing I dropped by. Uh, the second floor is going to become available later on once I restore the power to the power plant because, of course, it has to be me that has to do something about it. There's a vast number of NPCs in this game, but are any of them gonna do something? No! Anyway, this is all we can do uh, in the Sylph Tower for the time being, so... Let's continue with our little tour of uh, Saffron. This is the toll booth that leads to Route 7 and Celadon, which is going to be our next destination once, we, uh, once we're done here. Yeah, I heard about the accident at the power plant. Everyone is talking about it. It's like... It's, it's a freaking obsession, and it, and it doesn't even look like uh, the power is missing anywhere else but those critical places, like the magnet train, the radio tower at Lavender. Uh, anyway, uh, this pink house over there, there's a, a girl who lives there. Her nickname is Copy Pet. Copy Pat. Copy Cat, sorry, can't speak. And, uh, yeah, she has, um, uh very interesting skill of mimicking whoever she's talking to or whatever yeah she is basically forever alone as her mother is telling us and i can't understand that i mean i'm a complete weirdo myself but uh, if i encountered something someone like that uh, i'm not sure how i'd react and uh, yeah this is um, it's confusing here, actually. Quit mimicking, but that's my main hobby. She's going to become a bit more important later on. It's a Clefairy Poké doll. We got uh, some other dolls over there. Uh, or not. This is actually a real bayonet. Apparently, uh, she enjoys soul-sucking ghosts or something. Okay, so... Those two are Poké Dolls, so... Yeah, we're gonna come back here later on because that's where we're going to obtain the, the ticket that's going to allow us to ride the Magnet Train. Not that it really matters because we can just uh, fly to the other region through uh, the Indigo Plateau anyway. And I don't think there's anyone who breaks the, the fourth wall about that, like we saw with that old man with the Abra uh, back at the Pokémon League entrance. And we got Cameron, the, the photographer, here once again. It's been a while since uh, since we encountered him, actually. Uh, I, I don't remember when it was, but I was I was wondering uh, just the other day when, uh, when I would see him again. And some of his appearances are actually time-based. Like, he's only going to appear on uh, at certain areas on certain days. And, uh, yeah, uh, this is the building uh, that the Magnet Train uh, starts from. It's, uh, it's a line between uh, Saffron and Goldenrod, but unfortunately, just in case you're a slowpoke, you haven't heard the news, there's no power to power the Magnet Train, so we... I, normally, I'd say we can't go back to uh, Johto, but as I said, there's this Indigo Plateau trick that you can do. Uh, it was uh, a lot more tedious to do in the in the in Gold Silver Crystal since that wasn't an alternative. But uh, now that we can do that, uh, you can conceivably do the entire game without uh, uh, powering up the Magnet Train, and you're not going to give a damn. So now that we're done here. We got uh, yet another toll boot to the north. This one leads to Route 5 and uh, Cerulean City. And uh, yeah, well, Saffron's actually such a big city that uh, it should uh, receive praise more often than not. It's, it, sh it really should be second nature at this point. It's like uh, someone who's uh, from Toronto hearing about Toronto in the news. At some point, you just get jaded if you live in a big city like that. Whereas, I live in a small town, and whenever it's mentioned on the news, it's like, Oh, they're talking about my town! So it's uh, really different. And, uh, okay, is... Is he gonna stop? Do you have anyone in mind? Well, actually, um... No, I, I was gonna make a joke about how um, Misty ends up there later on in the game, but, uh... I can't think of anything creative enough. There, I admitted it! I can't make my own jokes! Are you happy now? Anyway, this place is the Fighting Dojo in uh, 
in red, blue, and yellow, you could fight a few trainers here, and if you won, you could obtain either a Hitmonlee or a Hitmonchan. However, there was nothing at all here in uh, Gold, Silver, Crystal, but this place in Hard Gold and Soul Silver is, as this guy is saying, where you're going to be rematching the gym leaders if you get their phone numbers at the right time, and if you call them at the right time. So, uh, right now there's nobody else there, so I'm gonna take my leave of this place, so I think that only le that only leaves the gym, but I I don't think I've checked out that toll booth that leads to Lavender, did I? I think not, so, um, <laughs> I was pretty embarrassed. Well, how could you mistake this old rundown shack for the actual gym? I mean, uh, the hostile takeover from Sabrina and her goons. Well, it happened, uh, three years ago, so that should be some something everyone knows by this point. Uh, okay, so we got this guy here who's talking about the, the history behind uh, the power plant because we are not tired of hearing about that place at all yet. And yeah, I totally forgot about uh, the Pokemark, by the way. It's uh, sort of weird how, you know, the, the Sylph Tower just uh, blocks access to the stretch of land that's behind it. At least it looks a bit more conceivable from a perspective viewpoint than it used to. But um, here we go. When it's, when it's not the power plant, it's the, it's the radio tower in Lavender. So airmail, dust ball, quick ball. Nothing that I need right now. I'm not here for buying anything. I just want to show you what's available here. And this is the usual stuff. So nothing really exciting. So I'm just going to uh, check out that toll booth that I was talking about earlier on. And then we're going to be good. We're going to be able to take on uh, the gym. And I already... Oh, no, I didn't want to talk to you again. But uh, okay. Uh, Let's see uh, what the guard says. They're not thirsty anymore because it was their way of making an artificial roadblock in um, in uh, red, blue, and yellow, where, where they were all thirsty and uh, you needed to go buy a beverage at uh, Celadon in order for them to let you pass. So um, this gym hasn't ever really changed. In red, blue, and yellow, there were more underlings as fire red and leaf green. Obviously, but yeah, now I'm gonna go with Raikou in the lead because it's got Shadow Ball and Crunch. It doesn't have stab like Gengar, but as I said, there is less danger of taking a super effective move to the face, especially since, well, Raikou has only one weakness to begin with, and I'm not expecting to see it a whole lot in this gym. And the good news is that I kept Crunch on my Raikou, which means that I'm going to be able to, uh, uh, take advantage of the lower physical defense of many of uh, the psychic types that I'm going to be encountering in this place. And uh, while I'm fighting those underlings, there was something that I wanted to talk about. In the last video, I talked to you about uh, those uh, really idiotic people who call themselves Pokemon fans who, uh, well, they did you know what to uh, a thing about uh, a really awesome plate of cookies. Well, uh, over at Fire Monkey Technology, someone uh, linked the rest of us to a video that showcases uh, angry Sonic fanboys' reaction to IGN's review of Sonic Generations. The review was an 8.5, and you and you got a crap ton of people saying, "Oh my God, 8.5! This this is a shit score. This isn't worth buying." IGN clearly don't know what they're talking about. And, I mean, hello, 8.5 is actually a great score. You got someone, if I remember, saying that if it's under 9, it's not worth buying. I mean, Jesus Christ, you should be grateful that 8.5 is what it got, because most Sonic titles ever since Shadow the Hedgehog probably didn't get even close to 8.5. So I can take comfort in the fact that uh, Pokemon fanboys aren't the only ones making complete asses out of themselves. But then again, I have a thing for Sonic the Hedgehog, the, the series as a whole, because I, I grew up with it, with the, the Genesis titles, and uh, I have lots of memories of uh, those games. I would pop them in any day. 
so it still sort of hurts me to see that every franchise I seem to like is represented by absolute morons! And that's not all! I'm not done with... I'm not done yet! Uh, if you remember, I talk a lot about Diablo, and obviously I'm a big fan of the series. Well, it seems like it's another fan base that's keen on covering itself with ridicule every chance it gets. When it's not the auction house, it's Diablo's childbearing hips or whatever. But the newest one, uh, at BlizzCon, they announced that uh, people who subscribe to uh, World of Warcraft for a year would get Diablo 3 for free. Which obviously angered people who seemed to, to have a sort of sense of entitlement. Like, I played Diablo 1, I played Diablo 2 in its expansion, I bought all three games with my money, so I should be the one who gets Diablo 3 for free. Well, excuse me, because if you do the math, anyone who's played World of Warcraft for more than a few months already paid more than the monetary worth of the entire Diablo series thus far. So from that perspective, it actually makes sense to have them have Diablo 3 for free. Now, and it's not like it's Diablo 3 for free, either. You gotta pay for a full year world worth of World of Warcraft subscriptions, which, from my understanding, is about $150 or such. So, yeah, it's hardly free, so if you want uh, just Diablo 3, you're still gonna end up paying a lot less than that, so... Yeah, either way, there seems to be this huge sense of entitlement from people who, who who bought the first two games. They think they have the right to have, like, a discount on it or something. But seriously, that kind of thing, it's common business practice. Hyundai slaps, I think it's a free iPhone with their new cars, and no one's complaining about that. So why should they complain about a promotion that... They, that Blizzard is completely entitled to doing. And the worst part is that it's not the first time that this, uh, that this kind of entitlement has uh, reared its ugly face. Because, uh, well, the, the, betas for Di the beta for Diablo 3 is underway right now, and there haven't been a whole lot of keys distributed thus far. And uh, a lot of people actually have a beef with the fact that uh, whoever is chosen to enter the beta is chosen at complete random. And what this means is that... Uh, uh, b by the way, there is just one criteria for entering the beta. You need to have purchased a Blizzard product before and still have the key. Any, any product will do. It could be the original Warcraft, it could be World of Warcraft, it could be anything. That's the only criteria. However, the way you the, the way you hear those people talk about it, uh, they 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 think that uh, that players who played Diablo one and two should be at an advantage because they are fans of the series. But once again, the paying customers uh, uh, the, for Blizzard are mostly those that uh, play World of Warcraft. So yeah, you're really not entitled to anything there. If if Blizzard wants to make it a completely random lottery, the only criteria that they look at is uh, the power, the, the general power of your system, because they want to test the game on a wide variety of uh, computers and such. That's the only thing they're looking at. Otherwise, it's complete random, and it and it still manages to piss people off like crazy. So that's three fan bases that. I belong to and they all want to make me take a shovel, dig a hole, and stay there for all eternity. And seriously, I don't know which one is dumber, so I'm gonna let you guys vote. Pokemon, Sonic, or Diablo, which one is the most stupid? And uh, now, if I remember, I just gotta keep going left or right until I eventually run into Sabrina. There's probably a quicker way. But this one's reliable, you won't get lost ever. So, oh, I imagine I'm gonna have to go through all the rooms a second time. But as I said, reliability over speed. So I guess I'm gonna make it to Sabrina soon. So, uh, it's gonna be a double program today, it seems. So, uh, after the break, uh, there we go. After the break, I'm fighting Sabrina.